How do they match up physically? Significant leg reach advantage, a full five inches, six inches for Hannes and Fajera. He's also three inches taller than David Michaud. Can he use those kicks, that long leg reach against the wrestler? Well, we'll find out here in just a few moments. Lillian Garcia gets welterweight action started in the PFL Smart Cage. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time we now bring you the first fight in the welterweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. He specializes in wrestling and boxing. Standing at five feet, nine inches tall, weighing in 171 pounds. In 20 professional bouts, he has a record of 15 victories and five defeats with eight wins by knockout. Fighting out of Phoenix, Arizona, here is David Bulldog Michaud. His opponent, fighting out of the red corner, his background is in kickboxing. Standing at six even, weighing in at 171 pounds. In 17 professional bouts, he has a record of 14 victories, two defeats, and one draw with seven wins by knockout. Fighting out of João Passau, Brazil, here is Crazy Boy, Henderson Ferreira. Your referee in charge, Keith Peterson. The accomplished Keith Peterson inside the cage, and you see him wearing the ref cam goggles, so hopefully we'll get an inside the cage shot at some point in this welterweight bout. There's the angle you'll get. Impossible to be closer to the action than that. Hannes and Fajera in the blue trunks, David Michaud in the silver. A touch of the gloves and welterweights underway. Leg kick from Michaud to start. Comes in with a three piece, but Hannes and Fajera, footwork takes him back. Another body kick. You heard the grunt there from David Michaud. Both of them kicked, yeah, at the same time. Inside leg kick from Michaud on the calf of Hondeson Ferreira. I like how Hondeson's keeping that distance. As Michaud moves forward, Hondeson moves back. And can't land it. Big winging punches there for David Michaud. Anderson Ferreira switching stances back and forth. Now, Mashad said to us in the fighter meetings that anytime Henderson switches stances, he still only throws that rear leg. We see him loading up that back leg to fire the power kick. And almost on cue, he threw it there, Eve. Glances off the body of David Mashad. This time, a low leg kick. I believe Mashad is going to use that and try to time that kick and catch it, especially when he switches to the southpaw stance. Eye poke, a little eye poke, poke in the eye. David Michaud will get some time to recover from this. Honda very Fred. painful and very disorienting to catch the fingers in the eye like that. Ooh. There's the ref cam. A look at that eye poke. Appeared to be inadvertent. Now, it was the lead hand, the right hand is in the southpaw stance. And that's very painful. Rashad will get as much time as he needs, up to five minutes to recover from this. An apologetic Anderson Fajera has been warned by referee Keith Peterson. You guys have been poked in the eye in a fight before, eh? I have, both in, in wrestling and in fighting, I've been poked in the eye, and it's not fun. It's not fun. It makes my, st it made my stomach feel like awful. It made me feel a little bit nauseous. David Michaud gives the all clear after the referee and doctors look at him, and we're back to action. A couple of jabs to close the distance. 
I like what Henderson's doing is as he backs up, he circles, and that he never runs into the fence, and it makes it much harder for Machado to take a shot in on his legs. Yeah, he's getting a little more aggressive, but Machado's got him where he wants. Good turnaround. Anderson Pereira puts David Michaud's back on the cage. This clinch is where Michaud wanted to be, but not with his back on the cage. Michaud doing a nice job of trading, trading places with Ferreira. He's got the body lock. Let's see if he can get something moving here. A couple punches on the exit there for Michaud, but they glanced off the shoulder. And now Ferreira reaches down for a single. Michaud responds with a nice knee to the body. And a hook just grazes off the chin of Hannes Ferreira. Beautiful two-piece there. Straight left and then a right jab from Hannes Ferreira. Overhand from David Michot. Heating up here halfway through round number one. Michot set that up nice. He's changed levels. Looked like he was reaching for the double and he came up with that hook. Hannes looks more technically sound. Look, cup check. So we've got an eye gouge and a cuff check. What's next? Ooh. Official. Dave Michaud's corner imploring the referee, saying that's two fouls. That should be a point. Separate fouls. Usually get a warning first. I, I disagree. I don't I, think that's a point. It was inadvertent. You know, it was nothing malicious. It's, it, again, especially from a southpaw, it's one of those things that happens. Same with the eye poke. Now, there are rules in place where you, where you extend your hand, you can't have your fingers out. You have to keep your fingers closed, but he's been warned for that. Ready, ready, ready. Also, ready? that, that kick clean. came in the middle of the combination. We're back to action here. Dave Michaud doesn't want any more time to recover. Aggressive, coming out of the corner, hot. And now they're winging punches. Right hand lands for Hannes and Ferreira. More precision from Ferreira. A little wild from David Michaud. Another right hand lands for Ferreira. The shot pushes him against the cage. The fight like you mad or not? I think the answer is yes, man. <laughs> There's our ref cam here. Keith Peterson close to the action. Michad, the American in the silver trunks. Ferreira, the Brazilian in the blue. I like that little escape off of the fence that Henderson just used. And now Fajera with a body lock, and he'll Looking attempt to trip. trip. Oh, interesting. Successfully gets David Michaud down with the body lock. And I thought Michaud conceded that a little easy. I, I thought it, I expected a little more defense from him there. Michaud opens his guard, attempts to escape the butterflies. Up kick just misses. And back to his feet is David Michaud. Oh, and there's big a right hand. hand. Big right hand by David Michaud. Michaud oh, looking for the finish here late in round number one. Peppering Henderson Ferreira in the crucifix position. Henderson's got to get his left arm free. Get that between his head and Michaud's head. Or Michaud's going to be able to continue to land these shots. And Keith Peterson steps in. David Michaud with a first round stoppage. Six points and a ticket to the welterweight playoffs. And it looked like that decision by the referee was not so much about Hanneson Ferreira being unconscious or incapacitated, but just stuck and unable to improve his position. Absolutely true. He was stuck in that face-up crucifix, the very difficult position to get out of. The shot was just going to keep floating on top of him and keep peppering him with those handle fists. I, I might have let that go a little longer, honestly, if I was in that referee's position, but you, can't, you always want to err on the side of fighting safety. David Michaud, the underdog, pretty significant underdog in this fight, comes away with six points and a first round TKO after the big right hand drops on this in Fajera. And here it is, that overhand right, and he immediately jumps into that crucifix position. Randy, you saw him stuff the hand there of Honda Ferreira and then pinch those legs close. 
here, Pereira is stuck. It's, it's a difficult position to get out of. You got one arm trapped with his shoulders, the other trapped between his legs. You're, you're at the mercy of your opponent there. You can't generate a lot of power from there, but you can definitely take a beating. There's the ref cam view of the overhand right that lands flush for David Michaud. A big, big victory, especially on the bounce back after his first loss in 17 seconds. Well, now we know he's got some power. He's able to drop Henderson for header and follow up with good technique. Watch how he follows up. He's in half guard and immediately passes to side control. And from side control, he traps that arm, that lower arm for the crucifix. And keeps that arm, that high arm, tight on the head and keeps landing the shots to get the referee step in there. That was all about volume and not necessarily damage. There's the corner of David Michaud. Rightfully very excited because they know the Bulldog just grabbed himself a spot in the BFL welterweight playoff. We'll hear from our winner when we come back on ESPN Plus. Take a look at our Cajunomics final fight stats. It was a hotly contested first round, especially heated up after those fouls, the eye poke, and then the inadvertent groin strike from Honda Ferreira. It gets hotter and hotter, and eventually David Michaud lands the big shot. You see him there landing a quarter of his arm strikes. He was throwing a little bit more wild, as you mentioned, Randy, right. but the overhand right was enough. So he caught him coming in, caught him with, with a nice head movement through that Overhand right right down the pike and, and hit Ferreira right on the chin and put him on his key stick. One interesting thing we did not necessarily expect, Eve, it was Ferreira with the lone takedown in this fight. He did get the takedown off the body lock. Kind of looked like Mashad conceded it, but I think his pride jumped in. He stood back up and landed that big right hand. L Lillian Garcia makes it official inside the PFL Smart Cage. Ladies and gentlemen, the stoppage comes officially at four minutes and 37 seconds into round number one. Your winner by TKO, earning six points in the welterweight division and clinching a playoff spot, David Musha. First round TKO for David the Bulldog Michaud. Where does that put him in our welterweight standings? Let's take a look. Good enough for fourth place, at least for now. David Michaud, six points in. If you look, we talk about how thick this welterweight <laughs> division is. Unbelievable. Look at all of those points. It's like Oprah's favorite thing. You get six points, and you get six points, and Magomed Magomed Karimov gets six points. David Michaud forces himself into the rankings Great performance from the Bulldog. He's inside the cage with Caroline Pierce. Thanks, Sean. David, what a performance. You knew you needed those points to finish in order to get through to a playoff spot, and you did just that. Just talk us through what this means to you. Oh, this is everything, you know? I didn't want to just come in here and be part of the regular season and then go 0-2 and get, bu get bounced out. It was all about making the playoffs and then getting wins in the playoffs. Now that's the next goal. And absolutely, after that finish by Sadabusi, the 17-second liver kick, you said it took a while to recover. You were in a lot of pain for a few weeks after that. Talk to us about training and the strategy coming into this fight and if it played out as you expected. Uh, it's actually kind of funny. Like, I got hurt by Sadabu, you know, in the last fight. Ribs were hurt for a while. Couldn't train for, like, a month. Couldn't go hard. Then I started training hard, got in camp. I was training for three weeks. Uh, I ended up messing up my back, and shout out to my chiropractor, Scott Mitchell, and my trainer, Jared Aki. They kind of kept me healthy, but really, for the last three weeks, I haven't, I haven't done too much. I did a lot of stationary bike, and then last week I was able to roll, but I still couldn't go hard. So, I mean, it's funny because fighting against Sadabu, I felt like I had the best camp ever. This fight, I trained for about two and a half weeks hard, and, you know, I get a first round finish. It's always about the adversity and coming through. Let's take a replay, look at the replay of your performance and talk us through this. All right. So set it how you set it up. 
Uh, well, I mean, I got set up by getting taken down. Then he got out, or he backed off. I stood up, and as I stood up, he was throwing. And that's our drill that our striking coach, Rob Emerson, has us do. Cover, cover, fire back, fire back. You know, so we get used to seeing shots in the, like, against the cage and when guys are throwing big shots. So it's something we've trained a lot. Cover, cover, I went left, then I stepped into that right and I put him down. Once he went down, you know, that's, my ground and pound's been um, kind of my forte, so that's right where I want to be. I jumped inside control, stepped over into the crucifix, and from there, guys, guys can't get out of my crucifix, so I could have been sitting there hitting him for days. You certainly had Ferreira pinned down. Let's talk about the two fouls. You got the eye poker and the groin kick, but your face when you stepped up after the short break in action looked like you were even more determined than ever. Uh, the eye poke was, it, it was kind of bad. It's kind of kind of still blurry, like I can't see too good out of it, but the nut kick, it, it hit and kind of skidded off and then hit my body, but it still hit. Like, I think he might have thought it was all body, and it wasn't. It bounced off the cup and then went to body, but yeah, it's, it's tough. You know, it's something you got to fight through. Uh, I don't, he didn't do it on purpose. It's just when guys are backing up, their hands are open, and when you're throwing kicks and guys are moving, things happen. Like, I have no ill will towards him. He's a cool guy. We, we talked a little bit as much as two people who don't speak each other's language could talk, but he seemed cool. Well, congratulations tonight. What a performance. Secured your place in the playoffs. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. David Michel, back to you, Sean. Yeah. Get ready. What you wanna do? If you don't strike first, that's when they gon' come at you. Yeah. And you know it's true. Don't let your life get worse. Be timid, that ain't cool. Nah, you gotta wake up, grab your crew and lace up. Make your move right now, cause